Hello, today is B-Box assembly day and um, I know this is very simple to most people but I figured there might be some people out there that are not quite sure how to go about assembling brood boxes or honey supers when you buy them uh, unassembled. So this is the end product, it's when I just finished right now. So I thought I'd make a quick video to go through the steps I go through when assembling uh, boxes. One thing I should mention is that I'm myself a um, kind of a hobbyist woodworker and um, I've tried to make these myself and it's possible to do them if you have the right tool like a dado blade or a router um, but what the one thing you have to consider is um, your time to know to get the wood cut it assemble versus paying $12 to get uh, your pieces pre-cut, pre-assembled, pre-drilled, that all you have to do is glue and screw. So to me, the fact that I can probably whip um, easily a dozen or so of these boxes an hour if I bat in pre-assembled is money well spent for my time. And then it gives me more time for beekeeping and the multiple other hobbies that uh, I have ongoing. So, so without any further ado, let's uh, get going. I'll show you how to put these boxes together. So the first thing is that when you go to your bee supplier, you're gonna ask for a no deep, uh, no deep brood boxes or, or honey supers, and uh, they're gonna come like this. So it's like a big puzzle. This is the handle. I have to make sure that we're gonna orient the handles on the same way. These ones are, I like a lot because they come already pre-drilled. So um, these holes are where the screws are gonna go in. Um, if the one you're buying don't have this, I highly recommend to drill all these holes uh, right through with a small drill bit before you start drilling through it. Or otherwise, you risk splitting uh, the joint there. Right? So we're going to have two small ones and two big ones. Okay, so the first step is to uh, apply some glue to some of the joints. Um, this is optional. Not everybody does uh, applies glue to it. Uh, I do because uh, from um, doing some woodworking, a, a glue joint is way stronger than any nails or uh, screws that you might put in there. We're going to still use screws as a way to clamp everything together. And I think it's, it's, it's I would not recommend to only glue. Like you st still need the extra support, you know, from uh, the screws and or the nails but um i use glue it's important to use a good glue so a tight bond two or three uh the important thing is that uh it's going to be uh, water resistant and this you no know, the tight bond two is awesome for any project that will be outside and exposed to water so you get a good seal out of it and um, this dries pretty quickly. So this is my, actually, this is all I buy. <laughs> this is my go-to glue for all projects, all woodworking projects that, that I do. So uh, you can buy them in bigger jugs, you no know, like uh, four liters, and then I just refill this little bottle. It's easier to work with. So um, first thing is, so this is your handle. What I like to do is start with uh, one of the longer wall piece and we're going to flip it. And I always make sure the handle is towards the top. So our handle is here. I'm going to put a small bead of glue inside each of these joints. Right now to try to uh, hold the camera. I'm doing this. So I'm not putting a lot. And uh, like I said, this is just for extra uh, precaution but you know and then I go back all right each side there there you go so that's kind of it looks messy and I'm not really worried about it you know um, if you want to be all nice and tidy uh, what you can do is uh, use a, a little piece of wood and and go in between just to make sure that you have a, a good spread. This is optional, not really necessary, but it's good. So we're gonna do that on both sides. All right, so I finished um, putting glue. So now we're gonna put this back on our workbench. Actually, I'm, I'm using my table saw as my workbench, like probably many woodworkers are doing. I don't have a proper 
workbench is kind of on, on my to-do list. But anyway, okay, now we're gonna get the sides. So we're gonna get two of these. Now remember that um, the handle part is at the top, which means that this one is at the top. You have to go like this. And all you have to do is line them up. And with a bit of gentle pressure, it should fit in. There you go. And as you see, it's not it's not tight. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna use is a uh, I'm gonna use a good old rubber mallet to uh, tap this down. And it's hard to tape and oh, <laughs> do this at the same time. I need another hand. I have to be gentle when tapping it. Get my drill out of the way, and then we'll do the same thing over here. Until you have a fairly tight joint, it's normal that you might still see some lines there. Um, it's gonna get tighter once we actually put the screws in. And I'm gonna do some more, uh, more tapping with my mallet once everything is into place. So now we have two sides, so I have to put the next one in, remember? So what you see here is uh, on this piece is where your um, honey frames are gonna rest, right? So this has to be towards the top. This one is like that, so it's going to go like this. And again, that's where uh, it's good to get uh, a good supplier and good products uh, so that uh, you have minimum warping. And they see that went in pretty easily. A bit of tapping. There we go. Seam. So now what I'm going to do is uh, apply some more glue on this side and on this side and then we'll put the top on. So we finished putting glue on these two, the two ends. Now we're going to put the other side. I said top earlier, but really that's just the, the other side again. So the handles are up. So I want to make sure that uh, this piece uh, now it goes the right way, it's gonna go like this. Right, on the side, and then you know you're not square, so it's important to just bring that in and fit them in. So usually what I do, I start with one side. So let's see if I can get that one in. Go, and then on this side. If you don't have a mallet, you can use your hand. It's important just to make sure that you don't knock like or hit right on the fingers uh, of the box joints. You wanna, cause you don't wanna break them. <laughs> I'm gonna use my rubber mallet for the rest of it. go and now we're ready to screw uh one thing i'd like to I always like to check first as well is to know if, if technically if you assemble them and um, um you know the risk is that this it's not going to be warped or even if it is it won't be too much so you can see here i'm probably just a few degrees off so uh what we'll do is push on this side no to uh Bring it in a little bit. And uh, now we have a nice square box. So, so with that, we're gonna start uh, to screw them together. It's always good to have a final inspection. So handle is here, handle is there. I have my two frame rests on one side. So I know I'm good to go. 
it doesn't matter which type of screw or you can even use some nails you know with uh with a flat head if you if you wanted uh what i like to use because i own uh, some of the a few of this craig jigs this is what i use for uh, uh pocket holes uh these are nice stainless steel screws uh with a with a coarse um a coarse grain uh, a coarse thread sorry uh, the coarse thread is better for soft grain like pine or cedar and these are self-tapping screws which means that um, as they as you screw it it's, it kind of acts as a drill bit so the chances of causing any split in your wood is is uh, is reduced by using these i like that they have the flat head because once they go in um, as they go in it will act as a clamp and try to bring all these pieces together you don't have to use this. This is what uh, I use. Uh, it works well for me. Uh, if you do, you make sure you buy the coarse ones. And I use an inch and a half. This is um, about five eight, uh, like almost an inch thick, but it's five eight, I believe. It's more than three quarters. And uh, so you can see that once uh, it's in, it it gives um, a lot of room to buy it into the. Uh, the other piece to clamp them together and because these come with uh, pre-drilled all you have to do is put your screws in and, and drill them so usually what i like to do is start with uh, one towards the center you don't want to over tighten them and uh, then one uh, on the side I should bring them together. It's hard to do this with one hand. <laughs> there you go. And as you see, so this is like a little bit. So we're gonna do this for the entire row. So here's a good example where no, it's not quite fitting, but as you drill, You actually provide a tighter fit and you will have some glue squeeze out and that's totally fine we'll just clean that up once we're done so i'm almost done this side i'll finish it and do the other side so that we finished on both sides uh, you have some uh i have some glue squeezing out here which is fine actually shows me that i've i've used a bit more glue than i needed and uh you should there should be a tight seal in there all i use is uh use a wet no i'm not wet but like a, a moist rag uh it's not soaking wet and you know the glue while it's not dry will you know even though this is uh waterproof you're still able to to get some of it out you know and clean that up i mean this is not furniture you know so you're not too concerned i just like things to look nice though if, if it can so all these glue joints all these drips here trying to get that and clean that up there you go i usually have a look inside there's more inside so make sure that we we get that and there's a little bit here as well so i should go with my finger to spread it into these cracks and then go back with the the wet rag to pick it up that's it so now we're just going to flip the box over and do the same thing on the other side uh, one thing to mention like sometimes uh, it's possible you might have a, a tight fit at the extremities but not in the center or the opposite and that depends on uh if your piece of wood is bowing um towards the inside or the outside i mean this is pine right so if it sits for an amount of time you no know, these pieces will start to warp so uh, what i do when i see some of these small gaps i'm not really worried because from the outside um it's pretty tight but i still like to go just with a, a bit of glue and uh, i just kind of i rub it in into that crack you know to uh, to seal it I mean the bees technically um if if there is a crack they will seal it they will use propolis and uh seal any gaps but this is more like for the integrity of my of the box itself um 
I did that on this side as well over here. So I have now assembled three of these boxes. I uh, I put the timer and it, it took me about eight minutes to assemble the box. So earlier, uh, I think I said I could do like 10, uh, 10 uh, an hour or so. That's maybe a bit uh, a bit too much. You know, if you take about you know, uh, 10 minutes a box, you could probably do six to eight an hour. Um, also build them one by one. There's probably ways I could improve my uh, my um, efficiency. However, like I mentioned, uh, if I would take into consideration consideration the time it would take me to go and get that wood, cut it, uh, pay for the product, uh, for me paying ten to twelve dollars uh, for a box like that is uh, totally worth it. So now we have the option to paint or to stain. I prefer to stain, and what I use is this uh, outdoor acrylic uh, deck and siding, semi-transparent stain. Uh, the reason I, I like using the stain is because that actually gets into the wood, right into the grain. Um, no, pine is, is very soft, and uh, by if you apply paint, it's mostly going to be just on the surface. As to stain, you know, will get into the grain of the wood and offers, in my opinion, a much superior protection. Um, now, there is some very good uh, outdoor paint as well that you could use exterior paint. It might be a bit more expensive. You know, I've been working with this can for uh, three seasons now, and it's probably uh, half full. So this works for me. I like the uh, the cedar, kind of orangey, you know, natural cedar color that it, it gives. So... Um, but this is totally up to you. Some people will go and put a primer and uh, apply paint on it right away. Uh, I prefer staining. So you do whatever um, you want. So here's a trick on uh, to help you uh, paint or stain your boxes. Uh, all I use is two you no know, sawhorse and um, a piece of two by four. And you can put your boxes like that. And then you just rotate them as you stain them. So. Uh, Kind of a nice trick that I found online that uh, works very well and then you don't get drippings and you don't have to handle them too much. Now the important thing is that paint is only to be applied to the outside of the box. You know you don't want to have some inside where your bees will be. This is strictly an exterior protector. Now you'll notice that the end grains, all these areas there, will absorb uh, way more uh, of the sealant and it, of the stain, it's important to make sure that you uh, you give it, you put enough in there, uh, because otherwise it's going to be water, it's going to be absorbed in there, and that could like warp your boxes. So here I'm done with one side. So what I have to do is you know, flip it and you know continue with my staining, you know, and. Uh, I put a lot to start with, and then I find that as you uh, continue applying it, you know, it, it gets thinner and gets much better. You could probably use a sprayer if you wanted. I just use a, this old paintbrush. Um, the handles also have some exposed end grains, so it's important to put a, a fair amount in there as well. And again, this these areas. And you just keep brushing until you, you can't see any uh, no, uh, any uh, brush marks. No, that's the part I hate the most, obviously, <laughs> honestly, about this whole process. No, I hate I hate painting like that, but it's worth it. And you can see the color difference already. So I, I really like that color. And I know once in a while, after a few seasons, you might have to do this again. So I'm gonna finish them all right now and show you the final product. And there you go, about uh, half an hour later, I'm done. Um, now I have a bit of dripping on the inside, but that's, it's not that big of a deal, though the important is that you're not covering the entire uh, inside of the, of the bee box. So anyways, I hope you found this video useful. Um, and uh, although this is nothing complicated, maybe, maybe this is uh, maybe it provides you, you with some of the you know, the confidence to uh, to go ahead and assemble your own bee boxes. So that's it.
thank you for watching and uh, as everybody says if you are can like this video and subscribe to my channel that'd be greatly appreciated and that way you can keep up with my beekeeping adventures thanks everybody